okay uh, so at the end of yesterday's class uh, there were a lot of questions about floating point decimal and all of that so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to spend the first 5 or 10 minutes just trying to clarify several of the issues that came up yesterday so, so i guess if i write something like so this was uh, one of the questions yesterday 9.875 how do you represent it as a floating point uh, number in the representation so first let us try to see how would be represented as uh, just a binary number right so this 9 i hope nobody has a doubt that it is 1001 0, right so this is just like an integer right so the question is what happens with this 0.875 right how do i represent it in binary so let's see so let me take the number so you know this is 9.875 which means what this is 9 times 10 raised to 0 plus 8 times 10 raised to minus 1 plus 7 times 10 raised to minus 2 plus 5 times 10 raised to minus 3 and if you look at these powers of 10 over here these exponents these tell you exactly where the decimal point in this case since this is base 10 so it's a decimal point these tell you exactly where the decimal point is and which which of these digits appears where right so something that is multiplied with 10 raised to 0 will appear immediately to the left of the decimal point something that's multiplied with 10 raised to minus 1 will appear immediately to the right and so on okay and in fact there was a question yesterday that if i divide 9.875 by 10 why is it that the decimal point moves to the left Does everybody agree that 9.875 divided by 10 is 0.9875, right? So the decimal point moves to the left if I divide by 10, and it moves to the right if I multiply by 10, right? So there was a question yesterday after class that why does that happen? So well, if you agree that 9.875 is this, so then if I divide by 10, I will have to divide this whole thing by 10, right? Because 9.875 is just this. Now, if I divide this whole thing by 10, what does it turn out to be? It is 9 times 10 raised to minus 1 plus 8 times 10 raised to minus 2 plus 7 times 10 raised to minus 3 plus 5 times 10 raised to minus 4. So, if you agreed that this corresponded to 9.875, I hope you'll agree that this will correspond to 0.9875. Right? This is just like the 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 multiplier of 10 raised to minus 1 was the digit immediately after the decimal point so the multiplier of 10 raised to minus 1 should be the digit immediately after the decimal point here right so if i divide this by 10 then this is what i get and therefore now i can read it off from here so multiplier of 10 raised to minus 1 is the stuff immediately after the decimal point 10 raised to minus 2 is at two places to the right of the decimal point multiplier of 10 raised to minus 3 is 3 places multiplier of 10 raised to minus 4 is 4 places so is this okay and similarly if i multiplied this number by 10 9.875 times 10 would be 9 times 10 raised to 0 plus 8 times 10 raised to minus 1 plus 7 times 10 raised to minus 2 Plus five times ten raised to minus three times ten, right? And what is that? That is nine times ten raised to one plus eight times ten raised to zero plus seven times ten raised to minus one plus five times ten raised to minus two. And by our same convention, the multiplier of ten raised to zero is the stuff immediately to the left of the decimal point. So the multiplier of ten raised to one would be one place to the left of it this will be one place to the right of the decimal point and this will be two places to the right of the decimal point so therefore 9.875 into 10 is 98.75 times 10 is this clear so this is why when you divide by 10 the decimal point moves one place to the left if you divide multiply by 10 the decimal point moves one place to the right well now there is nothing sacrosanct about 10 over here the same thing would happen 
but started doing things in binary. So just as an example, suppose I give you 101.11, some binary number, let's say we don't care what this binary number is, right? So what does this represent? This is 1 times 2 raised to 2 plus 0 times 2 raised to 1 plus 1 times 2 raised to 0 plus uh, 1 times 2 raised to minus 1 plus 1 times 2 raised to minus 2. Same idea, it's just that the base is 2, right? And now suppose I say I want to divide this by 2, whatever number this represents, I want to divide that by 2, which would mean take this and divide it by 2, the whole thing. So what would that be? That would be 1 times 2 raised to 1 plus 0 times 2 raised to 0 plus 1 times 2 raised to minus 1 plus 1 times 2 raised to minus 2 plus 1 times 2 raised to minus 3, right? So now how should this number be represented in binary? The multiplier of 2 raised to 0 is the stuff immediately to the left of the point. It is no longer a decimal point because the base is 2, so there is a binary point now, okay? The multiplier of 2 raised to 1 is another place to the left, multiplier of 2 raised to minus 1 is one place to the right of the binary point, another 1, another 1, okay? So what has happened? I took this number divided by, I got this number, essentially the binary point moved one place to the left, just like when we take a decimal number divided by 10, the decimal number moves one place to the left. Is this clear? There were several questions yesterday after class about why is it that when we divide something by 2, the binary point moves to the left. This is the reason. And by the same argument, if you multiply this number by 2, the binary point will move one place to the right, right? So there is nothing very special about the base 10. Whatever is happening with 10 as far as movement of the point is concerned, the same thing is going to happen with 2, right? Except that there you are multiplying by powers of 10, now we are going to multiply or divide by powers of 2. Is that clear? Okay. So now let us come back to the original question, right? So we said 9.875 and we could represent 9 using 1001. We want to know what 0.875 would be in binary, right? So what would be 0.875 in binary? This is a number that is less than 1, right? So what we could do is we could say, okay, to first represent this in binary, let us try to multiply it by 2. So, I will show the multiplier over here and let us remember that we have multiplied by 2. So, which means I will do this. Is it clear? So, I am just multiplying by 2, dividing by 2. Why am I multiplying by 2? To get this guy to become something more than 1, so that we can then represent the part to the left of the decimal point in binary. Okay? So, what happens if you multiply 0 0.875 by 2? What is it that you get? Yes? 1.75. So, the number 0 0.875 is therefore 1.75 into 2 raised to minus 1, fine? Now, as far as this 1.75 is concerned, you have this 1 over here which was just like this 9 to the left of the decimal point. So, we will say that, okay, from here I know that it is going to be 1 plus something and then that has to be multiplied by 2 raised to minus 1, right? So, that something here is once again less than 1. Right? So now what I am going to do is, so I so will write it as 1 plus 0.75 times 2 raised to minus 1. Now once again this 0.75 is less than 1. So I am going to take this whole thing, 1 plus 0.75. I am going to put another multiplier of 2 here because I want to get this to something greater than 1 that I can represent and so I have to make this 2 raised to minus 2 because I have multiplied another 2, I have to divide by another 2, right? Now this number 1 that was there, so I am multiplying it by 2 as well in the process of multiplying this 0 0.75 by 2, right? So now this number 1 we saw in binary is represented by just 1. So if I multiply this thing by 2, what is going to happen? the binary point will just shift one place to the right. So, I will get 1, 0, right? This is what we just saw, multiplying by 2, just the binary point one place to the right. So, if the number 1 is represented as 1 1.0, so 2 times 1 will be represented as 1, 0 point, right? And so, so this is, you know, whatever I will say, 1, 0 point, 
plus I mean this is of course in binary plus this is now 1.5 this is in decimal okay and this is 2 raised to minus 2 now once again from this 1.5 I can figure out what the integer part is right and I can express it in binary so this is 1 0 point in binary plus this one will be just one point in binary plus 0.5 in decimal right I am sort of mixing binary and decimal so you can see how the binary representation is gradually built and this is still in decimal so I am keeping the fractional part always in decimal okay into 2 raised to minus 2 is that clear right so now what is this 1 0 point in binary plus 1 point in binary so there is a system of doing binary addition where you can add two binary numbers and figure out what the result is in binary but for the time being let us just convert it to decimal add them and convert that number back to binary so this is 2 plus 1 3 and let us convert 3 back to binary which will be 1 1 right so we will have 1 1 in binary 0.5 in decimal multiplied by 2 raised to minus 2 so we will have 1 1 in binary 1 1 point rather in binary plus 0.5 in decimal and we have to multiply this by 2 raised to minus 2 fine so now once again that 0.5 is a fractional part so what I am going to do is I am again going to multiply by 2 okay so I will say 2 times 1 1 in binary plus 0.5 in decimal times 2 raised to minus 3 now I have multiplied by 2 so I have to divide by 2 once again now what is 2 times 1 1 point the point will shift one place to the right right so it is 1 1 0 point this is in binary right plus this is 1 point 0 in decimal times 2 raised to minus 3 okay once again I will try to represent this in binary the integer part of it in binary so what is the integer part of it in binary it's just 1 right so this will become 1 point in binary plus 0 there is no other fractional part that is left so rather point 0 in right and now once again I have a binary number I have another binary number there is a system binary addition let us not worry about that let us convert them to decimal add them up convert the sum back to binary so 1 1 0 is 6 1 is 1 6 plus 1 is 7 what is 7 in binary it is 1 1 1 so this is 1 1 1 point in binary and there is no other fractional part now right so it is really 0 the fractional part is 0 into 2 raised to minus 3 is this clear so therefore what have we done over we have said that 0 0.875 in decimal is 1 1 1 point 0 into 2 raised to minus 3 in binary okay so now we know what 2 raised to minus 3 does right this is basically dividing by 2 raised to 3 and what does division by 2 do it will just shift the binary point to the left so you have to shift the binary point 3 places to the left so this is 0 0.111 in binary here any morsel of doubt in anybody's mind how this happened there is nothing very deep we are doing here we have just converted the base from 10 to 2 rest is exactly the same okay so now let us try to find out what would be 9.875 right so this 0.875 we know is 0.111 9 is 1001 so we, so this is basically 1001 this is the 9 part and 0 0.111 is the 0.875 part right we want to write it as one single binary number which means we want to combine these two things but note that these are being multiplied by 0 or positive powers of 2 these are being multiplied by negative powers of 2 so even if I put these together with the binary point in between 
their multipliers will just stay the same, right? So if I just write 1001.111, this part will get multiplied by powers of 2 exactly the same as this. This part will get multiplied by powers of 2 exactly the same as this. So therefore, this part will give me 9, this part will give me 0.875. And so if I put them together, remember in a binary representation, what do we do? We just take 1 into 2 raised to 3 plus 1 into 2 raised to 1 plus 1 into 2 raised to minus 1 plus 1 into 2 raised to minus 2. So we add this part to this part, right? There is a plus when we go, go from binary to decimal. So therefore, it is 9 plus 0.875, which is 9.875, right? So 9.875 in binary is exactly this. Is that clear? Now, if you look at this number to the left of the radix point, right? This is the binary point in general arbitrary base. It's called the radix point. So to the left of the radix point, there are four digits. There are four bits rather. A normalized mantissa requires that to the left of the radix point, there is exactly one bit and that bit has to be one, right? So therefore, I've got to shift this over here. How do I do that? By dividing by 2 raised to 3. But then if I'm dividing by 2 raised to 3, I have to also multiply by 2 raised to 3, right? So 1001.111, since I want to push this here, I have to divide this by 2 raised to 3 and I have to multiply it by 2 raised to 3, okay? So this is 1.001111 times 2 raised to 3, clear? This is 9.875, okay? Now if you look at this mantissa, this is in a normalized form. To the left of the radix point, there is exactly one bit and that is 1, okay? So therefore, as we said that this is a redundant part because it's always in the normalized mantissa in binary to the left of the radix point if you require one bit and that has to be non-zero, therefore it has always got to be one. So it's always one point, so we are not going to represent this, right? So the effective mantissa that will be represented is 001111 up to how many binary places, like this is not decimal places now, this is binary places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but we require 23 places for the mantissa. So you put whatever, 17 zeros over here, right, repeat it 17 times. Is that clear? So therefore the mantissa, I mean once you look at this representation and you figure out that it is a normalized form, then you can throw this out because there is no point of representing this, right? So the mantissa as it will be represented in the internal floating point representation will just be this remainder part after we throw out the one point, right? Because the one point is kind of implicit in that representation. This first one point is implicit. Is that clear? You know, 9.875 is as we have just seen 1.00. 1111 into 2 raised to 3. This is the actual number, but in the floating point representation, we will have a sign bit, we will have the exponent bit, we will have an implicit one point over here which will never be stored, and this will be the mantissa. Right? So, this implicit one point is never stored because it is always one point. So, what is stored is for the sign, I'll have 0 because it's a positive number. For the exponent, I'll have to, once I get it in this normalized mantissa form, I'll have to find out what this exponent is, represent it in signed 2's complement form. So 3 in signed 2's complement form is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 8 bits signed 2's complement. So it has to start with, because it's plus 3, the MSP has to be 0 and the rest of the bits have to just give me the magnitude of the number. The sign 2 is complement when it is positive, we can just read off the magnitude straight away. What about the mantissa? There is an implicit one point which is already there, which is never stored. So, I have just got to store the remainder of it, right? So, it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, but this requires 23 bits. We have 6 bits over here, so you put all of the 17 zeros here. Is that clear? To everybody. Okay. 
good yes yeah so the exponent is 3 right i have to represent 3 using 8 bits because the exponent is 8 bits so okay so i have to represent 3 as a signed integer in 2's complement this is what we have to do right 3 is the exponent i have to represent it as a signed integer in 2's complement using 8 bits because the exponent has 8 bits right so how do we represent a signed integer in 2's complement using 8 bits we first see what the sign is that tells us what the msb is okay now if the msb is 0 there is nothing to be done for the other things we can just write off the magnitude straight away remember that circle we drew the other day so on this side we had 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 and this we said is plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 the 0 was telling us that it is plus and the rest of the bits were just telling us what that number is right so for positive numbers in sine 2's complement representation just put a 0 for the sign just write the magnitude of the number as is so here i have to write using the remaining 7 bits 3 so which is 5 zeros and 1 1 if it was a negative number if it was minus 3 suppose the exponent was minus 3 in another problem so now minus 3 in signed as a signed integer in 2's complement using 8 bits right so because it is minus the msb is going to be 1 and because it is 1 we now know that it is in this part of the circle and it is in this part of the circle that you have to do all of that jugglery to figure out what the magnitude is the other part of the positive part of the circle there is it's very straightforward you just read off the magnitude fine so now if i have to do it as minus 3 then how should it happen i'll have to write something here such that when the bits are flipped and i add 1 to it i get the magnitude so before adding 1 i should have 2 and then by flipping the bits i should have gotten 2 which means the number that i should get is the flipped version of 2 so what is 2 in 7 bits 2 in 7 bits is this so you have to flip this so it will be 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 is that fine so when you are writing a signed integer if it is a positive integer that is the easy part just put a 0 for the msp just write the magnitude straight away as an unsigned integer if it is negative that is the more complicated part because then you are in this part of the circle and this we saw was you know we have to go like this and so this must represent minus 4 this must represent minus 3 and so on but in this part of the circle there is absolutely no problem this is exactly as we would like to have it right so it's only when it is negative you put the msb as 1 and then you do the rest of the jugglery with the remainder bits right you take the magnitude subtract 1 find its binary and then flip the bits is that clear okay good so we will also convert these into some kind of lecture notes and put it up on the website so that you can yeah Nine point eight seven five into ten raised to minus seven. So let me ask you, if it was not ten raised to minus seven, suppose I give you the following number. Let's say four point three two one into five raised to minus three, or actually five raised to minus seven, and I ask you to write with the base ten over here. How would you do it, really? So suppose this was minus seventy. So I mean, since all of you have come through JE and you know the msc students have also completed a bachelor's course so is it very hard to see that minus 5 raised to whatever you give me is also 2 raised to something i mean all of you know how to do this right just take logarithms do that so similarly 10 raised to minus 7 can can be converted to 2 raised to something so you just write out what that 2 raised to something is and then the rest of it is the same right i mean i, I would do the same thing here if i were, if i asked you to represent it as a power of 10 I can't go on finding out 5 raised to 70 and then divide that number. It's not going to work, right? So, I mean, it's going to work in principle, but it's not going to work in practice, right? So, so you just convert it to 2 raised to. So, so does everybody know how to get this thing? Yes. So, 5 raised. You take log on both sides. So, let's call this x over here, right? 
take log base 2 on both sides. So, minus 70 times log 5 base 2 is x, right? Log base 2 of 2 raised to x is x. So, the thing that you should put up here is times log 5 base 2, right? So, log 5 base 2 would be available somewhere, you know, these are pre-computed things. Just multiply that, you get the number. And so, you have basically converted your, uh, you have you've shifted your base, right? You know, of course, you know, if log 5 base 2 cannot be expressed within the number of bits of or number of digits of precision you have, you will have some imprecision, but then that is kind of inherent when you are trying to shift bases. So, does that answer your question? I have not answered your question, but I hope I have told you how to answer your question. I think it was 2 raised to minus 32, yeah. Because in fact, we the, just prior to that, we represented minus 32 as a signed 8 bit representation. So, that exponent should come directly there. So, it was 2, but even if it was 10 raised to minus 32, you know how, how to do it now, right? Good, fine. So, we can ask you quiz questions about floating point representations, right? Okay, good. <laughs>